The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the October um, webinar session at Alarm Corp. The, um, we're going to cover uh, about how resolution affects storage requirements. Uh, my name's Richard Bell. I'm the National CCTV Product Manager here. And um, today uh, is basically about uh, numbers. So we're going to see uh, how frame rates and a few other different things affect uh, storage parameters. So um, it's a calculator type session with a number of different screens that we'll look at. But anyway, just before we get started, let's run through some of the uh, general housekeeping. Um, those who are familiar on our webinars will know this and it'll be second nature to you. But uh, anyway, uh, you'll notice that you're muted uh, and you're going to remain muted for the duration of the webinar. Um, you can see that uh, you can hear me and you can click on a hand icon on there. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody can um, hear the, the voice coming through. If you just click on that. That's the one. Great. Okay, you can see lots of hands. You can lower those and that now. At any time, um, you can ask questions but, uh, during the webinar, but we will have a, a dedicated question session uh, just at the end. Um, just remember to uh, hit uh, the send um, uh, button down on the bottom right hand side so uh, it will uh, come through to me so I can actually see that particular one. Okay. Factors that are affecting storage. Um, this is a juggling act and um, over the time that you go and look at all different parameters, um, you'll see, and we're going to uh, look at a couple of types of examples in that here, but uh, some of the uh, the main points that we're uh, going to cover um, and that here and that today, you know, the resolution, um, again from you know, VGA to 3 to 5 megapixel. Again in this IP world that we're starting to live in, um, resolutions are increasing and normally as resolutions increase, storage goes up uh, dramatically. The cost of storage is also coming down, you know, when you look at the uh, disk drives that are available today, um, that you know, the 6 terabyte drives are around now, They're, the 8s will be out uh, soon, so it's uh, getting phenomenal the uh, size of what we're going to be looking at there. Frame rate is an important um, item there to, uh, to go by, whether we're looking like real time, you know, 25 frames a second, or even slow down to you know, your, uh, 2, 3 or 5 frames, um, may they also be um, only the requirement uh, for a particular uh, scene. The bit rate. Um, we covered bit rates in a previous webinar that we looked at, and when we're looking at the constant bit rate and variable bit rate. Um, for the terms of the calculations, you know, we're working on a, have to work on a fixed figure, you know, so we're using um, a constant bit rate and a number of manufacturers and we've got a couple of different calculators that we'll show today um, have a specific bit rate that they put in there. And again, you can adjust this you know, up and down to suit and we'll uh, discuss, discuss a couple of those things as they come through. Compression, you know, these days you know, all modern IP systems are sticking with you know, like a H.264. Um, previously in the past where we had MPEG-4 um, compression and we'll see how the changes um, dramatically affect uh, storage rates when we look at a, uh, um, the two comparisons of the same uh, number of cameras uh, later in the presentation in that forum. And the um, that's, this will start to uh, also um, come into question about how many hours a day we're recording. You may need, may need to be recording you know, during business hours and then after hours it may change to uh, go to you know, motion only recording um, in terms of trying to uh, uh, get the best um, storage requirements and that out you know, of your system you know, uh, without you know, recording 24-7 if there's no need to, to do that. Okay, let's just um, look at the, some of the frames, uh, the sizes what uh, are around and there's others you know, that are here. I've just taken a, um, a snapshot um, in the main sort of uh, arena and the two in question that we're going to look at today are going to be looking at 720p and 1080p and on the right hand side uh, your resolutions, um, horizontal, horizontal sorry, and vertical and you know, they're a 16.9 uh, format in a wide screen and while 
these are not you know, hard and fast, but they're two of the most popular sort of ones around the place. And the same uh, methodology can be used for all the others, but uh, um, I just want to uh, try and just focus on those two. So you can actually see the difference when we run through the various examples um, about how the storage rates uh, increase as we go uh, further up in re resolution. Okay, if we start to uh, look at some of the uh, the examples, and we've got a, a number of these screens that are coming up, and I'll highlight the particular columns that we want to uh, look at um, while we're going through these particular ones. Now, I've just um, taken um, one of the Interlogix to True Vision um, calculators out here, and right across the following, and I'm going to use 720 and 1080 um, as the examples in that here, and I've uh, work on an eight camera selection. Uh, this is based on a 16 channel recorder, but just for argument's sake, this is working on uh, on eight. So with a HD, um, HD 720 resolution, now this is at full frame, uh, 25 frames a second. Now this particular calculator um, throws in you know, a six uh, kilobit, you know, it's, it's a six meg uh, bandwidth um, for the main um, uh, for each of the uh, the camera streams, and you'll see across into motion, 100% motion. So we're like recording all the time. This is not a motion only. This is like a full frames all across the, uh, the scenario. So what does that um, require if we go with eight cameras at that particular frame rate? Um, and for 30 days, and that's the number we're going to stick with, like a lot of um, tenders and specifications that we see, um, 30 days is um, probably one of the, the norms. Um, higher uh, specs, uh, finance institutions, some of them require 60 and 90, but we're just going to look at uh, 30 right across the uh, what we're going to talk about this afternoon. And you can see the storage requirement there is um, around about you know, 14 and a half terabytes you know, for that particular one. So. That's on you know, uh, 25 frames with a uh, 720p camera. Now the only change I've done with this second example, same uh, camera configuration with eight cameras, but I've dropped the frame rate down to 12. Now when you're actually looking at a 12 frame rate uh, playback, it's still uh, very good. It's not a choppy uh, frame rate uh, in terms of uh, looking at that, and uh, it's probably more than adequate in a lot of the examples out there. By doing so, it's dropped the bit rate down dramatically um, in the next column that you can see there, you know, around about you know, 1.8 meg um, per stream and that for it. Again, I haven't touched the motion, I've just left it going, you know, running at 100% at you know, full recording, purely for the exercise to show the difference uh, before. Now previously we had you know, around about 14.5 uh, terabytes required for those eight cameras with 720 at 25 frames. Now when we look at that, that's dropped down to you know, just under four and a half terabytes. So a dramatic difference you know, um, in the actual uh, amount that is required you know, to store that. By saying that, you know, you can adjust you know, uh, different parameters. You may want certain cameras to be higher you know, on the, uh, an individual recorder, and that can be accommodated as well. But you know, we're just keeping it the same right across the board in that, uh, for this case. Now the difference here, now I've still kept the frame rate at 12, you know, the bit rates still stay the same, but just the one to 1.8 meg, but I've dropped the motion down from 100% to 50% and that for there. So again, this is a uh, best guesstimate at this stage about, you know, how much motion is going to appear in the scene, you know, what's it actually like, you know, the environment is going to be in. Um, it could be completely quiet uh, at night times. Um, some people think like data centers are quiet, but you know, like flickering LEDs on um, uh, you know equipment, you know goes ahead, and you know that could also still keep uh, um, recorders and that going. But anyway, in this case here, dropping that down uh, to fifty percent, you know, and again when just playing with the calculator, you know, what does that do on the bottom line on that forum? And that will come up, and you'll see the difference. And that's around about yet. Yeah, you know, 2.2 terabytes um, for that. So again, you know, um, it does make you know, a difference you know, for that particular uh, calculation. Okay, now we're going to jump up. We're going to do the same scenario again, but the only change in here, we're going from a, a 720p camera to a full HD, you know, 1920 by 1080 in a resolution. Um, 
when you throw in 25 frames into this particular calculator, it's looking at a, at a 9 meg uh, bit rate. Again, that's probably a bit high, but purely for the, um, the argument exercise here, uh, as we go through the, uh, the stages, I just want to show you what it does in effect. So you do need more bandwidth if once you start going up in resolution um, compared to the others, and you know, the motion is on there as well. So again, we're using eight cameras. Um, the next screen is just going to be the summary. Um, it doesn't show the eight there because it's just a run out of room as it's rolled onto the next page. But trust me, I did base this on the in our calculate eight camera calculation. And again, here we're going up to you know nearly 22 terabytes. Um, previously uh, on the 720, yeah, you know, we were looking at you know 14 and a half terabytes. So it does take a jump. Yeah, you know? it's not double and then and there, but it is a significant increase. You know, for that particular um, resolution at that frame rate and that forum. Again, the same as what we did with the 720p. I've dropped the frame rate by half down to 12 and the corresponding bit rate for each stream also has dropped down to you know, a 4 megabits on there. Still with 100% in motion in that, uh, um, for this calculation and still on 8 cameras and that drops it down to just under 10. So you know, in that particular one there you know, we're less than half the uh, requirements you know, in that for it. So, there is some juggling around here that you can actually see what the differences in that are of what's going to be uh, required. And again, the third one here, the um, the mod that we did was with the motion, you know, dropping it down, you know, 50% in motion running on uh, 12 frames. So where we had, you know, just under 10 uh, terabytes required before, now we're down to five. So that's hard that again. Um, there's no hard and fast rule uh, for it. Um, a lot of times it fits into uh, budgetary um, expenses about where things have got to fit. Um, it may also be determined on the particular piece of equipment that you're using uh, that it, and it has a certain size capacity you know, up to you know, 6, 8, 10, 20 terabytes before having to add on additional storage. Um, and that additional storage, it might be that you might only need another 2 or 3 terabytes but it's you know doubling the actual uh, cost of the hardware, so that's when uh, you have to look at um, you know, basically more than one way to skin the cat. You may only need motion recording at certain times, or you don't need to have that high level recording uh, at evenings, you know, for it. So it's pointless recording uh, high frame rates when there's nothing going on. So yeah, this is where these um, decisions and a bit of feedback and discussion uh, with your customers need to uh, take place uh, for that as well. Now, uh, that's been uh, one of the Interlogix uh, calculators uh, screens that we've actually looked at there. Another one uh, which I'm going to show you now is from the Verit Next Diva, their particular VMS um, calculation. And again, I'm us only using 720 here. I'm not going to uh, bore you going through all the um, configurations going up with 720 and 1080 on that forward. But uh, one of the points I mentioned um, when we started was about compression with H.264 uh, and how that's progressed and has helped the storage uh, community um, a lot in modern times. So in, in this case here, I've put uh, used 20 cameras you know, with a retention time of 30 days and recording 24 hours a day. Um, I've had a fairly high percentage of motion in the scene, you know, that for it, and as we go down, and, and with a 25 frame rate, uh, this particular calculator, you know, it's got um, an average bit rate. It works out, you know, around about you know three meg on that particular one. Now, what we're going to need here, you'll see in yellow, the first um, yellow uh, cell that you come to, that it's having you know just under 18 um, terabytes uh, of storage. Now, previously before H.264, we had MPEG-4 compression. Now, this next uh, screen, that is the only one that I'm um, going to change is the compression mode, and you'll see the dramatic differences. So just keep in, uh, your eyes on that 17.6 uh, terabytes and what dramatic change it has when you go to MPEG-4. You know, more than double, you're going to 39 terabytes um, in that forum. So uh, that's a, a dramatic uh, increase and, and one of the reasons uh, why H.264 um, is uh, very important in today's you know, IP field. Um, 
you know everybody's just you know putting you know, wants more and more and more but you know we still have to consider the cost of uh, this storage space and you know and how that's actually going to uh, be the case you know we're looking out for 20 cameras in here so um, if I just go back a slide so that's more uh, in real life terms of what we're going to have but you know if you're going to have you know 40 60 or 80 cameras uh, on systems and that's still not even large by today's standards on some of them you know, about how we actually going to um, carve this up um, and what sort of uh, storage um, arrays we're going to have um, and that's that'll be the subject of next month's uh, webinar where we're going to look at different uh, types of storage and RAID designs and that for it so you know, uh, we've got all these requirements for these megabytes and terabytes of uh, video data but how do we uh, actually uh, look after them and keep them um, safe uh, in a uh, way that we're not going to lose any should we have any uh, failures um, um, as well and from it so um, it's probably been um, a relatively short um, seminar a webinar on that today um, but my main points that I just wanted to, to go through is this you know to actually see when you have these calculators and you're looking at your different resolutions about how much of a dramatic uh, change they can actually do um, you know on the bottom line in that for, for storage Just playing catch up and as we're going forward to some of these. And uh, information about people uh, wishing to know more about their products and the company that uh, you can go and look at our website, uh, alarmcorp.com.au and you can register there to receive the Alarm Corp Pulse um, newsletter that comes out that'll have information about our products and, uh, and specials and or you can contact any of the uh, people listed below uh, we've got their email addresses and um, their mobile numbers including my own so I'll just leave that there for a second for anybody who uh, does need that information just to to jot that down on that forum okay again we're also uh, on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and Twitter, you know, um, so please follow us there and uh, we're fairly regular on some of the feeds that get uh, updated um, across the social media uh, world um, for your knowledge. We're getting towards the the end of the year and we've still got um, a couple more uh, webinars in the intrusion uh, to go uh, next week. Uh, are all power suppliers really the same? Um, that'll be hosted by my colleague uh, Jeff Rushton and the every second Wednesday of the month, um, next one being 12th of November, about VMS storage design. And when, we're going to look at the uh, different rate levels, um, what's available, and we'll cover everything you know, from the, the smaller network type recorders you know, up to the larger VMSs um, for uh, um, what can be done in, in there. Okay. We also have uh, our promotions, um, which you can uh, log on to the website and, and order, um, and using the uh, code on the screen that you see right now to receive uh, an additional 10% off your discounted trade prices and that for the um, stock that we have there. Okay, the uh, questions. Um, we'll just, uh, if anybody's got a question out there, yeah, please uh, feel free to uh, type them in there and uh, click your send button down on your bottom right hand side and uh, I'll do my best to uh, answer those for you. Okay, I've seen various manufacturers' calculators and they seem to be different for um, the figures that they arrive at. Um, why is that the case? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, um, each manufacturer, and I'll show briefly the two that we've got there with our products with Interlogic and, um, and Verant, um, and you can put a 720 or 1080p um, scenario into uh, two or three different uh, manufacturers and you end up with uh, different uh, numbers on the bottom line. And those numbers could be uh, dramatic, you know, especially you know, if we're, even if we're only talking two or three terabytes, you know, on an NVR, that could be dramatic between you know one system and two. Um, 
it depends on how they're actually looking at their bandwidth and their sort of you know best guess because you know these are calculations as such and that for it. Um, there's no right or wrong part in that for it, but again, as a lot of people uh, will tell you as you get your experience um, through the, um, the time, uh, different scenarios, that's you'll start to um, get a gut feel for some of these and then you'll know probably you know, how that they actually um, calculate it and what tends to be uh, um, you know, more accurate. You know, if you're using ver VBA, you know, variable bit rate technology, you, know, you may be uh, quiet in some areas and then there's other times when it's going to ramp up and it's going to be higher than um, when you've done your calculation based on a constant uh, bit rate and that for it. So, you know, Yes, let's look at the your manufacturer's one. There are also a number of other generic ones uh, out in the marketplace that you can find out on the the web. Um, you know, feel free go and try some of those others so uh, you can look at them, and then you get yourself a bit of a gut feel um, to what actually you know uh, is you know the figures that are going to get you in the ballpark um, and as well. But again, when we do um, uh, system designs and calc, you know, for uh, supplier for our um, integrators, um, we'll give them um, a calculation you know, of the uh, requirements that they're going to need based on the parameters they're actually going to go and give us. Okay. Okay, the, uh, are the calculators available from us? Yeah, we do have a number of these that we can provide uh, to you, um, and they are available, you know, for both analog and IP solutions with our different manufacturers. And um, analogs are obviously a lot more uh, um, cost-effective in that sort of um, scenario. But IP is where uh, the actual storage tends to increase dramatically, um, in a form, and then you, you know you really do need to uh, be on top of your game to make sure that you know um, the client you know does ha have the you know, the right um, calculations and that put in there because you know if they're expecting 25 and you've only worked on 12, yeah. So yeah, we can provide those uh, to you. So then you've got these that you can um, experiment and look at all the different configurations and offer those um, to your customers and that as well. Okay, it, um, it's nothing else seemed to be coming up. It probably wasn't one of the most excitable uh, topics in it, but it is a very important one, and it's not the one to be um, underestimated uh, because at the end of the day, it really um, is important to you know to uh, get the numbers and that right for it. Okay, so in summary, you know, if we just look at a, uh, some of the the main points. To uh, to be wary of when you're actually looking at your storage uh, requirements, um, you know the first one is your desired recording you know, resolution. You know of what it's going to um, to be. You know that's the first thing that's going to be uh, the pick and that for it. Um, then you know what's your optimal frame rate. Um, and again, play with a couple of the different ones that there. Um, whether you uh, work on 12 frames or if you want it on, uh, uh, there might be, some people might want six or eight frames. And like then on a, an alarm condition event, it'll ramp up and go to full frame on 25 frames uh, a second. So that could be a scenario that you actually want to to look at in that as well. Again, the more uh, the bandwidth, uh, the parameters, um, this is an important point to be considered, especially if you're actually uh, sharing a corporate network uh, with uh, your client and actually it's not a dedicated CCTV network. You've normally got your IT staff involved there and they may uh, limit uh, your streams, uh, what they will give you um, per camera and that on there. So you need to work with them as well. And again, they may have a capped and that for it. So that is a very important point not to be underestimated. There, and then you know, once you put all these um, together, um, the bottom line is going to spit out. You know, okay, what your results going to be? You know, when you look at in days, if you know thirty days, you're going to need you know sixteen terabytes, eight terabytes, twenty seven terabytes for it. So that's the uh, the bottom one that'll be uh, determined on you know the the first three uh, parameters that you're going to have in your calculator on that for it. I'd like to thank you for your time this afternoon. It, um, yeah, we have kept it just under uh, 30 minutes, so um, I appreciate uh, everybody's got a busy schedule. And um, we look forward to seeing you next month um, for the last one in the series uh, of this year in about, um, about the Ray design for uh, VMSs. So thank
Thank you very much. Goodbye.